Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another one of my videos. Today, we're actually gonna be working on my 2006 Mazda 6i GT. This is a video backed by popular demand, and today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to clean and or replace an EGR valve on your car. Now, this video has been asked for me about a month ago. I just didn't have the time to do it, but here, I'm bringing it to you guys. Today, we're gonna be showing how to find First of all, the EGR valve on your car. I'm going to be showing you guys how to take it apart and then clean it. Now, there are two reasons why you probably want to clean the EG clean or replace the EGR valve on your car. First, you might have a check engine light that'll indicate that there's something wrong with the EGR valve. The second reason is, especially during cold weather, your RPMs, could, when you start the car during cold weathers, you could see your RPM really shoot very high and then start to fluctuate. Um, and then once it warms up, then it gets a little bit better. Usually those are big signs of EGR failure, um, and you can get away with cleaning them, at least most, most of them. Some EGRs, they don't really like to be cleaned, and you just have to get a new one. Mazdas generally tend to fall in that category. Um, but of course, carb cleaner or brake cleaner is really cheap, so take it out, clean it up, and if it works, it's a lot better. If not, there's a, lot, there's a big aftermarket for these cars, and you can go get a lot of replacements from AutoZone, Advanced Auto O'Reilly's, and you know, online parts like Rock Auto. Um, so let's get started. So to begin with, we need to first of all identify where the EGR valve is. And on top of that, we need to explain what the EGR valve really does. Now, as you can see, these this is the 2.3 liter four-cylinder uh, MZR engine that Mazda offers. It's been offering it for a long time on its first generation Mazda 6s and first generation Mazda 3s. Now, if you kind of come to this side of the engine, the driver's side, and you kind of look uh, towards the valve body, you'll see right behind it you've got this thing right here. And this is actually the top of the EGR valve. And the EGR valve itself is kind of right underneath that cap. So as you can see, there's the top of it, and it kind of extends all the way to the bottom over there. Now, EGR stands for exhaust gas recirculation. What it does is it usually is somewhere near the exhaust manifold, and it takes exhaust gases that are very high in nitrous oxide and puts them back into the engine, and it actually helps cool the, com the combustion uh, temperature within the engine itself. So it's a very important part of the car. It can extend longevity of the engine and help really cool down that temperature within your combustion engine. So to begin with, as you can see, there is an electrical connection on the top of it. So before we start anything, let's disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. And to do that, you're going to need your 10 millimeter, uh, usually the socket size or whatever that's usually lost the most. And let's take that negative terminal off the battery. Now, with the negative terminal disconnected, it's safe for us to unplug that electrical connection that's on top, and it's actually a very simple electrical connection. You're basically going to get a flathead screwdriver, and you're going to press it. Oh, there we go. You're going to press it right here. And you're going to push out. And usually these things will be stuck. They've been on for a long time, but there we go. The next thing that we're going to have to do, just by looking at it, we can immediately tell that there's this coolant hose that goes for, to your upper radiator, uh, your upper radiator coolant hose is actually going to be in the way. And as you can see down here, there are about three or four, four bolts uh, on either side of this EGR valve that we're going to have to get on, that we're going to have to get off as well as this line over here. So. What we're going to have to do first is kind of take this hose out of the way. That way we can sneak in a ratchet with a socket. So guys, to be able to take this EGR valve out now that we've got this coolant hose disconnected, there's actually only two bolts holding it on. As you can see, there is one right there, and there's going to be one on the other side. You can actually just barely see it. If you look on it from this side, you can barely see it's just showing. Maybe I can zoom into it a little bit more. But that is just the tip of it right down there. Just right down there, that's the tip of it. Um, and they're on either, of course, there's one on either side of the thing, of the EGR valve. So there's one, and then the other one's on that side. Um, and we're gonna have to get to it. 
but it's going to be really difficult. Now that one you can get out pretty easily. Just by taking that hose off, you should be able to fit a 10 millimeter long socket in there and get to it. Now, the other one, however, because it's so recessed back in there, you're actually not going to get be able to get to it unless you remove the battery and the battery tray as well. So, to remove the battery tray, of course, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket right here and take that out. You're going to need to loosen this up, take that out, take the 10 millimeter from the positive terminal out, let's take the battery out, and underneath that there's going to be two screws holding on the battery tray, and then we'll take that off. So, batteries out, one, two, 10 millimeters, and we'll take this battery tray out. Hey guys, so going back to this, like I said, there's two bolts, there's one right there, and there's a second one right up there. You really can't see it, it's right there but you can't really get to it just because there's this huge coolant passage that goes to the block of your engine, blocking it, which I guess they put it there for no pun intended, but they maybe put it there for a reason. Oh, let's have this coolant go to the block and it'll be blocking this EGR valve bolt right here. And it is simply impossible to get to with your regular hand tools. Now, I've, I've come up with an amazing contraption to help you guys get around this and here it is right here this is going to be the savior of getting that bolt out what this is is a 3 8 inch uh, swivel socket attached to an adapter this is a 3 8 to quarter inch adapter then you have a quarter inch swivel socket and then you have a 10 millimeter quarter inch uh, short socket now the reason i use this one was because and you could, you could say, oh, why don't you just use the quarter inch stuff and disregard that. But you got to remember, if you're going to try to use these small little quarter inch ratchets, that bolt isn't going to come out. Because those things, believe it or not, are torqued pretty hard. And a quarter inch isn't going to give you enough torque. Plus, on top of that, you really have to kind of snake it in um, to be able to get enough leverage with your 3 8 ratchet. So kind of, I might show you guys, see how well this goes. But you see, you get your contraption, you see it's very flexible and bendable. And then you're going to be able to kind of fish this around. I'm sorry for the angle, but there really is no right angle to get this thing on. But as you can see here, my finger is right there where that bolt is. I hope you guys can see it. And the socket is almost on. There it is. And there it is. The socket is right on it. And then you can get your 3 8 And your 3 8 could go right there. And then you could unbolt that thing off. And once you get it cracked, you'll know because the whole assembly will start to move. So let me keep uh, wrenching on that. And uh, let me take it out. And then I'll kind of show you guys after I take it out kind of the difficulty of that whole process uh, and stuff like that. All right, guys, and now that we've got this removed, the EGR valve, it's actually got a, a uh, metal gasket on it, uh, which you can reuse. I know a lot of people might not recommend it, but it's metal, so usually those things don't degrade. I'd probably get a new one if I were you, but if you find yourself not in a position to be able to get one, I wouldn't sweat about it too much. All right, guys, so the last thing that we're going to have to do is just release that coolant line. You can kind of do it from two different positions, really, whatever one's more accessible and easier for you to do, I would do. You can either take it from the throttle body itself, right there, or you can take it from the EGR valve assembly itself. Now, the EGR one's probably going to be a little bit harder to get to, and these ones, the prongs are kind of facing you right there, so I'm probably going to take it off the... Uh, the throttle body and just take that whole assembly out with me. It'll probably make install installation a lot easier as well. So uh, yeah, just to, just to say that last bolt was really difficult. You're gonna have to get creative with your hands and kind of go around this thing and unscrew it. And you know, it's it's right here now, but you know, it's 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 a real pain, and you just gotta have a lot of patience and just take that sucker out. But it'll come out. Let's let's take this coolant line off uh, from the throttle body, and we should be able to pull that sucker out. All right, guys, and there she is in all her glory. Um, just maybe I want to give you guys a little bit of update because if you guys don't haven't done this in a long time, uh, when you take out these, you just press them 
move this clip a little bit down. Usually these rubber hoses will still be stuck on that nipple uh, from the throttle body. So just get your pliers on there and just shake it. That way it breaks that connection and then just pull it down and it should come right off. As you can see, there was that simple bolt that we could get to. Here was the insanely difficult one to get to. Um, flipping it over, we can kind of see that uh, metal gasket. Um, it's actually got these uh, pings in them to stop the bolt from sliding in and out, uh, which is nice. Uh, but really, when you get inside, this is where you really start to see the magic. So here's that EGR valve. There's the valve itself. Um, and this one doesn't look that bad. I know you're going to say it's all brown and carbon inside of it, but I mean, that's pretty typical with these cars. And I mean, this isn't that bad. I've seen, I've seen a lot worse. I mean, I've, I've worked on cars that, that had idle problems during the winter time. Um, and they were very, very bad. Um, what I like to do in this scenario is, yeah, and I mean, this one isn't that bad. It really isn't, especially for a car that's never had it done before. What I like to do is I like to fill these up with brake cleaner and let them sit. Uh, maybe get a soft bristle and get inside of there and clean them up. Uh, but just let the brake cleaner just sit inside of there and kind of work its magic. So guys, here's kind of my finished product. I know it doesn't look that great, but it's actually pretty clean inside of there. And I'm pretty satisfied with that. I mean, it wasn't really that bad to begin with. I know you could probably get this even cleaner, but I got to put this back in the car because I got to make sure that car runs tomorrow. Um, but what I kind of did was I kind of used a mixture of stuff. I used some WD-40 because it's just a well-rounded spray. You can really do a lot with it. And then brake cleaner. Just let it sit sometimes for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, other times I'd use a pick, excuse me, a pick and just get in there and kind of agitate the carbon and then throw it out and refill it up with brake cleaner. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on suggestions on something stronger that can take uh, this carbon out, please let me know. You know, I hope we can keep benefiting each other. Um, I'm just doing what I know. Um, and like I said, I mean, it's it could be cleaner, but it's pretty clean. And that's that's not going to throw a check engine light. I mean, it wasn't throwing a check engine light before. Um, and like I said, I've, I've taken some of these apart uh, on other Japanese cars as well that have had idling issues. And they were a lot, lot worse. Um, and they still weren't throwing check engine lights. And you got to understand, you know, carbon uh, and all these exhaust gases, that's kind of how they look like. Uh, this is a dirty job. You know, as you'll see, my hands and gloves are covered with uh, all this stuff. And so... Uh, I wanted to show you guys kind of how this thing looks like when you take it out. As you can see, those are the two ports, um, and there's bolt number one and bolt number two. And as you can see, that bolt number two, well, I mean, I'll, t I'll put my finger right there and then just go straight. And as you can see, it's just right there on that thing. And boy, is that thing difficult to take off. But, uh, you know, like I said, use that contraption that I showed you guys and... You know, it, it, it somehow worked. There's a 10 millimeter, but it fell somewhere. I don't really want to lose another 10 millimeter, so I'm going to have to find it before I put everything back on. Installation is just going to be the reversal of the removal process. Um, it's just going to be really easy. We're actually... The, the nice thing about that design of the gasket that they had... Uh, and let me grab that again. So what you want to do is you just want to align this up, um, the gasket right there on what the with the plate I'd put that bolt through it and I don't and you want to put it through you can probably put both of them through just because as you can see this these gaskets they have these prongs on them and what will happen is when you slide the bolt through it'll actually hold these onto the surface um, and that way your gasket won't move and you won't be covering up part of it or something like that so it's actually a good design um, so let's put those through and then we'll see how it looks like so guys, as you can see, if you put those bolts through and they snap onto that ring and those tabs, it kind of really kind of locks this gasket in place and it's very minimal move. Um, and then you're able, you're able to uh, put the thing back on without having to fear the gasket moving and everything like that. So what you want, probably want to do, I'd leave the coolant hose until the end. I'd put it in and get both of them started, uh, both bolts started in, um, and kind of get them hand tight. Uh, put the coolant hose down, uh, put put a coolant hose on, and then tighten these bolts up. Uh, I don't know the exact specs on what how much torque you want to torque these down to, but just get them hand tight. Or excuse me, you just want to get them snug with the ratchet. Um, you don't want to get them too tight on, um, but at the same time, you don't want to put them too loose. And 
Uh, you can kind of check these after you're done. Uh, we'll start the engine and put our hand around this and make sure that it's not leaking anything or there's no gases or something like that. All right, guys, so the next thing you want to do after you have all of those lines patched up, make sure you return the coolant hose back to the throttle body. Make sure you tighten those two bolts back up. Uh, they're pretty hard to get to. I found using the uh, quarter inch small little ratchet with uh, 10 millimeter uh, was able to get to that back one and tighten it up pretty well. You just got to get them snug. Uh, and then make sure you put the battery tray positive negative terminal back in. So the last important step you want to do is make sure you bleed the coolant on your car. Because you took that radiator hose out, you're going to have a lot of air in the system. The best way I found to cool these mo to uh, bleed these Mazda, Mazda 6s and all these Mazda cars is take this cap off and turn the car on. You'll see the, the level drop and just keep adding coolant until it's on the top. And what you'll see is you'll start seeing bubbles pop up and the level go back down and just keep filling it up until you put it in here and it doesn't uh, it doesn't pop bubbles anymore and it just stays at that level for maybe 20 or 30 seconds. That's how you know it's there's no more air in the system and you've got it out. Make sure you, you wait until the car gets to operating temperature and that way you'll make sure you won't have any air pockets and you won't overheat your car. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys learned how to clean or replace your EGR valve on your car. Like I said in the beginning, it is a pretty important part of your car. You want to make sure that that thing is clear um, and clean. And uh, if you guys, if I missed anything in the video or you guys need a little bit more explanation on something or something wasn't that clear, make sure to drop a comment uh, on the video. I'm really good at responding to all of my comments and I'll make sure to help you guys as much as possible. Be sure to check out my next video coming out soon. It'll actually be how to change a valve cover gasket on these exact 2.3 liter Mazda 6s. Um, until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.